Welcome to the SAMPS Podcast, bringing you advice and insights from sales and marketing professionals in life science. Hello everyone, this is Harrison Wright with SAMPS, that is serving sales and marketing professionals in scientific research. I'm here with Stephen Archer, also, who is founding partner of Spring Partnerships. And the reason I'm here with Stephen today is on the 17th and 18th of June, uh, SAMPS is going to be holding a conference in Gothenburg in Sweden, which is going to be fantastic. And Stephen will be giving a presentation entitled Creating the Most Valuable Messages, Insights and the Consequences of Buying a Product. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that just now. And Stephen, one thing I picked up immediately from the abstract of your talk is you make quite a bold claim. Marketing of products is arguably dead. I, th- I thought that would be a good place for us to start. <laughs> yes, a very good, very good place to start. I, I never shy about being uh, provocative, but it, clearly we, we 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 need to be really aware of what works in the marketplace now and what matters to to customers. And I feel increasingly strongly from the evidence that I see working in the in the industry that the challenges that all organisations are having in engaging customers with new technologies or improved technologies is increasingly difficult. There's a whole number of reasons for that, um, but I'll come on to some of those reasons in a second. But I really want to respond to your, your, your question about the provocation piece. Product marketing is, and product sales, if you like, is, has been the lifeblood of the industry for well, really for decades now. That's where we start. And we start with the point of view of how do we, we position the solution uh, that these products and, uh, uh, and reagents and so on and so forth uh, answer. But to me, this is just not enough. This is not reaching uh, to the customer. Why is it not reaching the customer? Well, one of the reasons that's really significant in the last 10 or 15 years um, is that customers are now very able to um, answer for themselves questions that they need to uh, get answered about what is the right route they want to go with uh, technology that they're going to apply. So the Internet's been the biggest biggest player in this. And this is not just a feature of the life sciences industry, I should add. Uh, all customers in all markets now are able to self-serve. There's a colossal danger in this. Yes, they can self-serve to a large degree. The problem is that they believe that they can self-serve uh, their, their information to a far greater degree than they really can, of course. And what do I mean by that? Well, they get the knowledge they find, but is that all the knowledge they should have? They also, of course, like everybody, start off with certain preconceptions and certain, uh, if you like, biases in their thinking. And they naturally, although not necessarily consciously, look for those biases. And, of course, that's, that's a feature of scientific research as well. But it does mean that people, if they're looking, for example, for you know, a new instrument in, in, in genomic research, they will do their desk research. They may ask colleagues. Um, they have a preconception about what is required for a project or a workflow or whatever. But are they really understanding what can and should be done in their workflow that is, that is optimal? So... The paradox, if you like, of self-serving, the paradox of, of people finding information is that they will look at products, perhaps. They'll look at product um, specifications, but will they really find out what they're going to do for them and their project uh, in the long term? And are they really looking for the real possibilities uh, that are open to them? Well, probably not, because they don't know what's out there. And that's the trouble. It's massively um, restricting, shall we say. And I'll cut there because I'm about to. <laughs> I'll cut there. There's a clap because I've 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 gone on I've gone long long enough. So time for you to, to throw a question at me, uh, uh, Harrison. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there, there's so many threads to pick up on there, and w- what you say mirrors my experience, especially with things changing in the last few years, completely. But w- one thing that stands out to me as a point of interest: what what do you think this does, or what do you think this means for the the function of product management and product marketing as a role? I think the function of product management is now uh, one that has to have far more profound purpose. And by that, I mean product managers should actually be very close uh, to the research function, if you like, and the R&D function in their own organizations. They, in turn, need to be much closer 
to the opinion leaders and to the the PIs and and anybody involved in in driving projects forward in their in their customers in order to try to understand what they're really trying to achieve more to the point to understand what they are seeking to achieve with a view to you, the product manager then saying well actually if he wants to do that then he should be looking at a different way of applying technology or indeed a different technology because he's actually shortchanging himself in terms of what he's trying to to uh, attain because he's only seeking an answer to what he believes is available now. Now, I mean, a good example of that, if you like, is that you know, 25 years ago, we were all happy with flip phones, and no one was saying, let's have a phone that we can play around with on the screen with our finger. But when that comes along, suddenly the flip phone... Fl- Cut. Suddenly, the flip phone is the suddenly the flip phone is obsolete, and and the and the smartphone with its screen uh, screen controls becomes the the default. And 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 the, the the power of the of the the solution, if you like, was way way beyond what was demanded, expected, anticipated, and of course it completely changed the way that we now uh, get our information and 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 communicate with each other. So. That's a simple, perhaps obvious example, but if customers don't actually understand what they could achieve and they don't seek to share what they are really trying to achieve fully, then the product manager is, is going to be potentially missing out on the opportunity. Product managers tend to be, in my experience, overly isolated within organizations, and the product managers should be focusing far more on digging much, much deeper into the true purpose of the uh, of, of the customer's work. And how how do you feel that <coughs> organisations, if they want to succeed, are going to have to adapt their structure? And I, I guess what I mean by that is, you see some companies where, you know, large and small, uh, and in some organisations, the the separate marketing functions, uh, whether it's by product or brand or geography are quite siloed and segregated and they operate independently and in other companies things have a much more uh, integrated integrated flow of operation what what do you see as being the the future structure of an organization that should win in this way i think the integration of all functions that uh reach out to customers and that's sales marketing uh pr it is also about you know the um the, the key opinion leaders within organizations who connect with the external opinion leaders, they have to be joined up absolutely seamlessly at probably in most organizations of a medium to large size, uh, a CCO function in my view. Uh, I think that's the only way that you're going to get uh, a joined up approach and more to the point, you want to get the focus that is required as a different type of focus because it is much a more penetrating focus than simply a product management focus or even a standard product development focus. Because I've seen this happen where products are in development and product managers may be aware of that and they start to work on the plans for that product. But the reality is that by the time the product comes out, uh, you know, all hope of its, its value in the marketplace is already evaporated perhaps not by uh, alternative uh, competing uh, uh, products and, and, and services, but certainly by uh, different different approaches that customers are taking to, to technology. Uh, and a great example of that was, uh, you know, the, the change of light from you know, arrays to, uh, to sequencing, which started 20 years ago, but hey, presto, arrays are still around. They still have, they still have a value. And, and interestingly, there's a lot of, a lot of customers uh, who are in in the genomic research space, who are still stepping back to see a far greater value in in new arrays than the value they can currently get out of of next gen sequencing, simply because they haven't really understood uh, what can be achieved with the the technology they have. This is not about the product. This is not about uh, the the solution. Even this is understanding the longer term consequences of applying that technology and people tend to take a very short-term view uh, believe it or not of the right technology i mean by short term i mean probably less than 18 months whereas actually you should be looking at what's the right technology and the right components of a workflow uh from the point of view of of 
year to three years where you can really start to see the 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 play out of the uh, of the value that the uh, the services and products can pr provide absolutely absolutely the, the interesting thing about this is <coughs> everything that we're talking about here is uh, at least to my perception quite well understood in a lot of other high-tech industries but not so much in life science yet well, that's a really interesting point, and I think I think you're right. And uh, there are there's always lessons to be learned from other, other industries. <clears throat> and I think life sciences, the life science industry, the life science industry has, I think, a bit of a challenge on its hands. It's going through still a phase of consolidation. I mean, the Danaher GE deal being a good example of that, I guess. But I think the industry in now been characterized by very large organizations or small organizations and pr pretty much nothing in between uh, means that you have organizations that are either generally slightly under resourced in in uh, commercial skills or organizations that are overly processed and over institutionalized in in the scale uh, the large scale organizations and I think this limits the ability for the industry to be uh, flexible to be creative uh, and innovate new ways of being commercially effective. Whereas you look at tech outside life sciences, there's an enormous number of small and medium-sized organisations that are being very, very cute uh, about their their sales and marketing work. And I think that's because they there's a culture in those industries uh, and a scale also that facilitates that. But the the life science industry, I think, is suffering a little bit of um, of being stuck in its rut and also hampered by the nature of the organizations that now dominate the business. And I think that's something that is perhaps hard to reflect upon. So I will therefore be provocative and say it's something that needs looking at and, and waking up about. Definitely. And uh, as far as being provocative goes, I <coughs> thought you were quite polite about it there. <laughs> <laughs> I can be polite, you know. I can be polite, but no, really, I think the industry is is uh, is in real danger of, uh, uh, of of standing still or going backwards, and and not serving its market well enough simply because it is doing too many things the way that it did or tried to do, ten, fifteen, twenty years ago, and and I think product management, uh, I think the sales and marketing functions in operating in the way they used to work. I think is becoming increasingly outdated and its ability to reach customers is undoubtedly highly limited today. It is a massive challenge to get through to customers and people will give you stats to uh, provide alternative evidence. Well, that stat tends to come from those departments who, needless to say, need to be uh, justifying their existence, if you will. Um, is that provocative enough for you? Yeah, I, th I, I think we can agree with that. I think that's a good send-off. <laughs> But there you go. I'll stand by that truth, and I'll take I'll take that debate with anybody. But I do believe it's I do believe it's true. But I'm also saying, of course, it's an opportunity, and the opportunity is to wake up to the the reality that there is now an opportunity, not an easy one to uh, to, to 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 meet, but an opportunity to really get a far far better understanding of the the marketplace in which customers operate in. And in so doing, then you understand how to best position having developed the right products and services for that customer base. Fantastic. Uh, presumably, if someone listening wanted to get uh, more insights on how to actually go about that, they could do so at your talk in Gothenburg. If you come along to my talk in Gothenburg, and you'll hear reflections on this from other people at the meeting as well, but if you come for my talk, you will hear uh, much more detail in that session about the effectiveness of of insights about really understanding uh the the marketplace and the effect that that can have an organization and and perhaps more to the point the change that that does require within the sales and marketing functions of life sciences organizations so i think that is the opportunity to come along and and really see and hear something fresh and new, not just from me, um, but from the other speakers as well, who have, uh, many have, have been down this path and uh, have seen the effectiveness of this. Excellent. Well, the talk is going to be 
uh, on the 17th, 18th of June. Actually, it's the, the 18th, I believe, specifically. It's the 18th. Uh, it is the 18th of June, yes, and the morning, about 10 o'clock, I think, actually, maybe a bit earlier, but yes, exactly. Um, and I shall be also co-hosting the, uh, the the event and look forward to welcoming um, friends and new friends uh, to that meeting in Gothenburg. It'll be uh, it'll be a fascinating day. Perfect. Well, we, we hope to see you there. You can register online at sampssock.org. That is S-A-M for mother, P-S-S-O-C dot org. And it'll be great to see you there in Gothenburg in June. Thanks, everyone. To get more from Stamps, visit www.samp.org.